Hi, I'm Rich Lapierre. Welcome to the field troubleshooting portion of the Environment One factory service training video. One of the most overlooked things during a site inspection is documentation. When you arrive on site, you should always have a work order, repair tag, or something like that to document your findings, any problems, homeowner information like name, address, telephone number, and any notes you might want to put down. This will help you in the future when you have to repair the pump, especially if you're not the person that's doing the repairs. Once you've got everything documented on your service tag, the one thing you should remember is not to change the conditions at the site. By changing conditions at the site, you may have lost some valuable information that could lead you to the root cause of a failure. At this time, we're going to go do some basic checks at the panel. Once you've completed the initial inspection of the station, overall height is good, you're going to want to inspect the panel. Make sure it's securely mounted to the home, all the proper penetrations are, are made, two penetrations from the bottom, one from our source power, one for our pump power. You can see that this one here has a generator receptacle and this is a Protect Plus panel. So we'll remove our padlock, undo our clips, open the door. Once you have the door open, you want to inspect it for any signs of infiltration. Make sure there's no bugs coming through, conduits are properly sealed, no signs of any moisture or anything like that. Also check the lugs inside on any of the screws, any of the circuit breaker mounts. Make sure they're not starting to show any signs of rust or anything like that. Now that we've finished our basic panel inspection, we can move forward with uh, voltage checks and continuity checks. Inside the panel door, peel it back once. On a Protect Plus panel, you'll see a ladder diagram. The ladder diagram will walk you through the different modes, and if you hit the scroll button, it'll give you the different functions within the different modes. Peel it open one more time, that'll reveal the wiring diagram for the different options available for this panel or any panel that you're using. On a Protect Plus panel, as you walk up to it, you should be able to read the voltage and the amps if the pump was running on the LCD screen, scrolling back and forth between that and the system normal. On any E1 panel, we have a double pole 15 amp breaker and a single pole 15 amp breaker for the alarm circuit. E1 pumps operate in 240 volts, plus or minus 10%, for a range of 216 to 264. To do voltage checks, we're going to set our meter to a 750 volt scale. And in the event that you don't have it on here, we're going to go into the bottom of the breaker. We should read approximately 240 volts. And we do, we have 236. We should read approximately the same thing on the outside. 238. And we're gonna do the same on the alarm in to neutral. You should read around 120 volts. We got 118. Keep it on neutral, go to the outside of the breaker. We should have around the same. 118 as well. The last check you're gonna to wanna to do is the alarm feed to neutral to verify that we have power to the neutral side. And we do, 118 volts. In the event that you have 208 power, you'll need to use a buck boost transformer. A buck boost transformer, the high leg of that transformer must be hooked to L2. If it's hooked to L1, you could run the risk of shorting out the circuit board. The, the alarm circuit board is only rated for 120 volts, plus or minus 10%, which gives us a range of 108 to 132. Now that we've finished the voltage checks, we can move on and do the continuity checks. Be sure to turn both breakers off. Reset your meter to the 2M scale. We're going to use the leads that go down to the pump, L1 and L2. The first reading we're going to take is for the on-off switch. We're going to use the brown manual run wire and the red L1 wire. In the chart, it'll refer to uh, the system we're be that's being tested, the reading you should get, and if you don't have the proper reading, there'll be a little section there that'll tell you what some possible causes are for that bad reading. If you have a bad reading anywhere along the way through the chart, continue all the way down, do all of the checks. You may have more than one system uh, failing inside the pump at any given time. So don't just stop at the first one. If you notice in the chart, the green wire and the brown wire are the common denominators. So we're gonna use green to everything, brown to everything, and then our final check is going to be yellow to blue That'll check our alarm switch. So we're going to go to the brown wire to red. We want to make sure that this one is the, like we just did on the on off switch. It's closed and it is. On the black is the coil for the, and the contactor, 001. That's what we've got. 
We're going to stay on brown and we're going to go to yellow and blue. We want to make sure we have no direct shorts there. Open circuit, brown to blue, open circuit as well. And we'll stay there, go down to our ground bar, no shorts to ground to the manual run, and that's open as well. So we'll leave our one lead on the ground wire, and again, we're going to check every wire to ground. No shorts to ground on L2 or the black wire. No shorts to ground on L1 or the red wire. Over to the manual run wire. Again, an open circuit. Yellow to ground is open, and blue to ground is open as well. The final check we're going to do is yellow to blue. In this situation, we should have a closed circuit, and we do. That's letting us know the alarm switch is closed. The station should have enough water in it to turn on the alarm. Now that we've performed our checks in the panel, we can go ahead and inspect the station. When you're inspecting the station height, a couple things you want to look for. You want to see if it's too high or if it's too low or if it's in a natural low-lying area where staining water and a heavy rain event could pond up and suffocate the, the station, not allowing it to vent properly. Also, if it's too low, the grass could grow, covering the vent area, and again, that'll uh, allow the, the, the station not to vent properly. You want to make sure the cable shroud's in place. The cable shroud is there to protect it against lawnmowers, weed eaters, kids' toys, things of that nature. Um, and then at this point, we can go ahead and take the lid off. The lid's held in place by three screws, seven sixteenths. You can use a power tool, you can do them by hand. Once you remove the lid, just inspect the gasket, make sure the gasket's all in one piece and it uh, secures to the top of the station fine. Once you have the lid removed, make sure your grommet's in place for your vent pipe. Make sure your vent pipe is securely fastened all the way down to the wet well section. You also want to make sure the EQD is hung as high as possible and securely fastened and also the equalizer hung on the, the provided hooks from the factory. Now that we've inspected the overall installation of the tank, we can go ahead and separate the EQD and do the same procedures that we did in the panel using the pin numbers. Separate the EQD, get your meter, place it on the 2M scale, and follow the procedures in the chart on chapter three, page five. We're gonna use a chart that assumes that we're in enough water to turn the alarm on. So we're gonna start with pin one. Pin one to two, we'll check our on-off switch. And right now our on-off switch is showing closed. Pin one to three, we'll check the coil and the contactor. You should have a reading of 0 0.001 or 002, and we do. We're gonna go from pin four to all the other pins and make sure we have no shorts to ground. They all should read open. And they do. And our final check we're gonna do is from five to six. And that's gonna check the condition or the state of the alarm switch. And that's showing closed. Once you've done your pin checks, you wanna inspect the insert, make sure there's no signs of any oxidation, make sure the pins are in good shape no signs of any water, anything like that. And you also want to make sure the O-rings are present on the other end of the EQD shell. There's two O-rings, so when you put this together, it gives a nice factory tight seal. After you've inspected the insert for corrosion and things, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a meg check on the cable. We're going to check the cable uh, integrity of the insulation from the cable wires between here and the panel. You want to make sure you leave this disconnected to do that check. So we're just going to hang the cable right on the hook, grab our tools, and we'll go do our MIG check. Now that the EQDs are disconnected, we can go ahead and disconnect the wires on the terminal strips. We need to remove L2, L1, the brown manual one wire, yellow alarm feed, and the blue alarm return. Go ahead and remove those. Leave the ground wire connected. When performing the MEG test, any reading above 500 mega ohms is a good reading. A reading between 500 and 200 mega ohms is a caution reading. Anything below the 200 mega ohm readings should denote a bad cable. To start the test, we're gonna start with the ground bar. We're gonna take our black lead, we're gonna clip it to the ground bus, turn our meter on, 
We're going to take our other probe and go to every other wire. That wire shows good. That wire shows good, about 750 ohms. Blue wire is good. And the yellow wire. That wire shows good as well. So now we'll remove it off the ground wire. We'll move it to the black wire. We're finished with ground. And we'll continue on and test every wire to the black wire. Good. Over to brown, we're good. Over to yellow, we're good. To blue, we're good. We'll continue on and move to red. Red to brown, red to yellow, red to blue. That's good. Move to brown. Brown to yellow. Brown to blue, that's good as well. Our final ones, we're gonna go yellow to blue. And we're good. So that completes the MEG test. Shows that we have a good cable. We don't have any power uh, bleeding off between the two wires, between any of the wires. During the MEG test, if you have a bad reading, uh, go to the pump end cable, replace the inserts, the problem could be there. Put a new insert on, come back, reperform the MEG test. If it shows good, that probably was your problem. If it still shows bad, probably have a bad tray cable. In the event that you find a problem with the pump, the pump will have to be removed. Be sure the EQD is disconnected and the power is off at the panel. It's always recommended to pull the pump with an assistant. Josh is going to help me do this. You'll need to reach down with a core wrench, release the, lock, the latching mechanism, turn it to the green arrow. You'll also need to flip the core wrench over and close the ball valve. Once those two things are done, the core is ready to be removed. Now that we've repaired the pump and replaced it, we can reconnect the EQD, tighten the collar all the way hand tight, re-secure it on the hooks, and hang the equalizer on the provided hook. Be sure that the ball valve is open and the pump is latched securely in place. At this point, it's a good idea to manually run the pump to be sure that the discharge is seated in the ball valve correctly. Now that we finished the MEG test, we reconnected the EQDs at the station and we rewired the panel. Let's make sure all the screws are nice and tight. And the last thing we're going to want to do is a manual run test to test the system. We can now power the station back up. Turn both breakers on, wait for the system to repower. On the screen you'll see it says power rising. System is now ready. Once the system is ready, hold manual run for two seconds. Pump will turn on. LED for the pump running light is lit. Shows our voltage. 238 volts, 5.6 amps. You can refer to the charts in the service manual for the normal operating system for amps, which is 5 to 8 amps. Now that we've run the pump, I don't see any signs of leaks. Everything looks okay. We can go ahead and reinstall the lid. Line up the vents and the whole bolt holes. It's a good idea to get all the bolts fingers, uh, finger started. And we'll take our drill and tighten it down. And we can reinstall the decorative rock.